to talk about the histogram. The histogram is nothing more than a visual representation of every single pixel in your photograph. So on this left hand side we start with a value of zero. And then there are 255 bar bars that follow that. And we end over here. So there's two actually, including zero, there's actually 256 bars. Now what the bars represent is every possible shade of either green, blue, or red, sorry, RGB, green, blue, red, so that's where you maybe have heard of RGB before. And it's all possible shades of these three. And then uh, usually some softwares, and Photoshop does this as well, they'll give you an RGB, which is sort of an average of each of those in one representation. Now where does the height come from? I told you about the width here. These are the shades of green, blue, uh, red, green, and blue. But uh, the height is actually how many pixels there are of that particular color. So this one right here, uh, we don't have a scale here, but there's uh, more pixels of this particular color. We can say that this is around 100 than there are of this one, which are around 98. Okay, or 95 or so. And then way over here, maybe around 180, that's where we have the most of that particular shade. So we also have, um, so basically what this is saying is we've got a pretty well exposed photo. There's very few highlights. This is way up here at um, almost white colors. And then there's very few shadows as well, which is over in this area but there's a lot of um, mid-tone colors. Okay, so we also have some terms called low key, which means this is a photo, if a photo of the histogram sort of looks like this, we have a lot of shadows, no highlights, this is called low key. And then we also have high key, which would look like this, where almost all of the pixels are highlights and no shadows. So let's look at a photo. Here's a photo of my daughter in Lightroom. Lightroom is what I use to store all my photos. Here's the histogram here. You can see that there's a lot of well exposed um, parts of this photo. There's some highlights down here, but there's almost no uh, shadows. There's almost no lights, low lights. You can see that there's, there's a gap there. So something that I always like to do is uh, identify a dark point, at least just to start. On, in Lightroom, you can click Alt, and you can start to drag it down here, and you can see that darks come out. So I just let it go, and you can see that, okay, these are now all black. You can see that the histogram now has black pieces. Okay, they're starting to come there. So now there's some black values, and I can do the same for the white. So click Alt and those pieces will now be all white. All right, so now this is a little bit more, um, it has a full range of values. I could, what else I can actually do is I can start to drag these highlights up. I can get more highlight values, see what's happening to the photo. I can get more shadows, and what this in essence does is it creates contrast. That's what contrast does, is it splits the histogram. And I can actually go to contrast and we can watch it split. See, it takes everything out of the mid-tones and gives them to the highlights and lowlights, highlights and shadows. All right, double-click on the word, and that'll go back to zero. So I did like a little bit more black. The white's fine for me. That's okay because uh, she's pale, and she's got the blonde hair, and the chains are, dark, our chains are bright. There's a little bit of white back there. So the next thing, that's the histogram. Uh, another visual that's related to the histogram is the tone curve, or the curves, as uh, Photoshop likes to call them. So this, you can see in gray there in the background, that's the histogram. That's right there. It just made it a little bit more truncated. And I can literally, a good place to start is to make it an S-curve. So I can grab this guy down here, maybe move that, and grab that. It's a little too dark for me. You can see the histogram changing, and I can grab the highlights, and I can drag it up to make this S shape. So that, in essence, also creates uh, more contrast and gets things away from the midtones. 
I can also just drag the midtones up and you can see the histogram rising and moving to the right and then the same thing if I lower it down the histogram gets lower and moves to the left okay so those are two uh, visual representations both applications of the histogram itself just remember that it goes shadows midtones and highlights and I definitely recommend using your DSLR on the setting that shows you your histogram immediately after taking the photo and that's a great objective way to judge if your photograph is well exposed.